Welcome to the Counteract YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us for this short video tutorial. Hi, uh, good afternoon everybody. Hope you can uh, hear us all okay. Um, welcome to this uh, webinar this afternoon and on Pricebook One. So this is going to be our first of our two-part on Pricebook and we're going to concentrate really just on Counteract pricing today. So pretty much every option on uh, Counteract pricing. Um, it's Phil here and obviously Felicity is here as well. Hello. Who's going to do most of the talking. And we've also got Robin from our development department here today. Hello, everybody. Right. So about, as usual, about um, 35, 40 minutes, we are recording this as normal. So we'll pop it up on the YouTube video uh, when we're done. So if you don't get a chance to listen to all of it, you can catch up later on. OK, we'll crack on. Uh, right. OK, pricing. First of all, I just thought I'd mention a couple of help uh, documents that are available. Um, here we are in this wonderful help system. Um, this don't be misled by these. These are all the ones referring to the help uh, behind every screen. And your most important bit of this is the how-to section. And in house two, we've got quick reference guides. And in the pricing one, we've got price and term sales values, which is very useful as a quick glance. We've got pricing rules. There's also tally, area, and volume features, which we're also going to be covering today. And then there is also one on aggregate terms, which is also part of pricing and the price book. We're not going into that in detail today. So if you are interested in it, well, read that and um, ask us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, customer terms is obviously also part of pricing, but we've um, decided that it's such an important bit of the business that it will be. A webinar that we do in the future. Yeah, in its own right. So yeah. yeah. So there's the help things. Right. Okay. So now I'm going into Adam end product details. Now the first thing we see on our system, and not all systems, particularly single branch ones, won't have this, but we do have the ability to have um, one big set of company prices, and then if there's any uh, groups of branches or individual branches that want to have separate prices, need to have separate prices, be they costs or selling, um, for selected products, um, then you can have separate regional prices. Um, and so you works. could have a branch with the, all the same prices as the other branch, except for a few different bits and pieces, and that could be a regional price, couldn't it? Correct, yeah. Yes. So, if you so it's not maintaining two completely different price books necessarily, no, is it? No, no. And okay. it's just a few regional prices, yeah. okay. if, if it's very important. You may buy something, you know, maybe a depot, your supplier gives you a different yeah. price if you're in an expensive area, and you yeah. have to therefore sell it more yeah. for more um, to the customers in that area. Um, but all we have to do here is go through that to go into the normal company prices. Um, and the first product that I am going to look at is a garden spade. And this is the area that we're concentrating on today. So we've um, got a cost price always, which is generally the price that you pay your customer, although you could have separate buying terms covered in fine, well enough. Um, but also that cost price, the price book K price, is the one that's used for um, margins. If people can see margins on a sale, it's this cost that's used on a price book product. Uh, we've got the retail price, which effectively these two prices are all you need on a price book at the very base thing, and you could have two net prices there. Um, the, um, retail price will definitely be used if you were doing a retail cash sale, if you differentiate between retail and trade cash sales. Normally, if you have a trade A price, then that's the price that would be picked up um, when you either do an account sale that hasn't got a customer term associated with it, or if it's just a trade cash sale. Um, if you don't have, you know, if you if, if it's a trade A, if you've only got this retail, it always, no matter if you if you put B to be a price somewhere and there was only a retail, the system always sort of looks back to the one before. So if it's given A as its price and it hasn't got an A, it'll go back and look and see what the retail is. So that's how you can just have these two if you wish. 
Um, and when you're in this area, you've got the price interpreted there. So we've got our cat here. I've got one where I'm referring back to cost. So I'm basing my retail price on K customer for the uh, cost K cost uh, plus 150 uh, percent, and that's worked back out here. And it's also giving me my gross margin. So it's over this side. It's always telling you whatever you put in. It's it's recalculated it um, as soon as if I change that to be um, 69 it changes the other side here. Um, so going down, you've got these additional selling prices, a B, C, D and E, which you don't have to use if you don't want. Um, they can be useful for having quantity breaks, we'll look at that in a minute, and um, they can be used in custom terms and all people can use the prices, can just offer a C price to somebody. Um, if they've got the authority to change the price on a sale. Uh, we've also got the notion of these are collected price. Normally, people just have a set of collected prices. Mm. There's one price to maintain per product. There is the ability to have a separate delivered price. I'll show that there. We have got a product with delivered prices on. Um, you've also got the ability to have future prices. I think delivery, a lot of companies now just have non -stop, a non-stop delivery code, don't they? Yeah. A, you know, rather yeah. than a completely separate set of pricing for yeah. delivered, isn't it? Some people it's important, and yeah. sometimes it's for the heavier product. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, bigger, bulkier things. Mm. Um, if I move on to the next product here, I've just got an example of one where it's got three net prices. Not very exciting. Moving on to the next product, um, here, uh, I'm going to explain what the list price means. So the list price, you don't have to use the list price at all, but the list price um, is useful if the price that you get from your supplier is their list price, but that what you actually pay them, i.e. the margin that you'll have, or the price that you want on the purchase order, um, is a reduction on their list price. So you can do an update to L, um, and then if you've got things relating to L, then everything will update automatically um, based on uh, their price increase. In this instance, I've got just that our cost price is list less 25%. When I hover here, it says that I can um, have three percentages. That's what those three percentage signs mean. So I could put this minus 25, minus 3, minus 2.4. And as soon as I press tab or return, um, the percentage signs come in automatically. You don't have to keep tapping those in carefully. Um, then, yeah, so I've actually got my retail defaulting to L there. So that's what that one's doing. Um, so that's the list price. And it's worth saying, isn't it? In this example, you know, we we had one before that was all net pricing. Yeah. This one is this sort of formularized way of calculating pricing, and the benefit to that is that you only have to maintain one price in the Indeed. system, isn't yes. it? So. I mean, the but, joy that these days, I think this is um, easier in some ways. Just to have uh, net not, pricing. Not easier generally. Yeah. But it it is easier to update nowadays yes. than it used to be. Once yeah. upon a time, I would strongly advocate that you ought to have one price to update. But with the ability to update prices from a spreadsheet, mm. you can prepare your cost, net price, retail, trade A, and just load in the new prices totally. Um, I suppose you've, you've still got three prices to maintain, but if if it's the price you're interested in more than the any percentages, because yeah. percentages can be a bit tricky to work out to get the price you want. These days, with the upload from a spreadsheet, yeah, much um, easier. makes that much easier. Uh, then, uh, I think the next thing that I'm going to cover. is the ability to have um, pack sizes. And I can't remember what a bag is. <laughs> I'm having trouble. I think I've got some nails here. Uh, nails. 
Um, and here I've got these round nails. Um, and here, these are the different units of price for Tuckenberg, where I've got some nails and my supplier says that they're the price is per hundred. So I've got H here that I can put for per hundred. Um, and so I've got £71.10 for per hundred, which gives me, very clearly shows me that that's a per hundred price over there. Likewise, you can use a T for per ten. Um, you can use a K for per thousand. Um, U down here refers to the fact that it's now a unit. So I've got my supplier price, £71.10, which let, uh, is sometimes useful. I think some suppliers give a price that is 0 0.711, for example, yeah. pence per item, which is kind of difficult to put on here where we've only got two decimals, um, because that's how money works. Really, the two decimals. <laughs> no. um, so the only way to deal with that, if you want the accurate pricing, which is the best idea for margins, um, is to use H or T, whatever works best, to get the whole full pricing that they're giving you. And now I want to sell these by the unit, so I just put. I'm saying K cost U, the unit plus two hundred percent, gives me two pounds thirteen each. And here I've got a U again, um, because I'm basing it on the K. If I was going to do retail here, I can just say, because the retail is already a unit, I can say retail minus 10, and it knows that's H, because the retail is yeah. U. Um, then on to my next product, um, as where I've got 10, and I'm showing that U actually there, so we'll skip rapidly past that and now we talk about the way in which because some suppliers will say oh our price is per 125 per pack so it's yeah. a pack size yeah. so you want to sell them by the unit you buy them have to buy them the buying price has to be by pack so if i put my 125 in there i don't have to put a description but i can if i want um and then I use the P here, then that price is per 125. And then again, I can use the U for my own price. So in this example, I've got the retail price being a unit, but the trade price being um, per pack. Um, so that's another way of playing around with it. Um, so that's those. And now, I'm going to show you an all singing, all dancing product, which has all. It's Phil's favourite product. Phil's so loads so of these. So, so <laughs> <laughs> um, which, as you can see, the price for those is a K. In other words, it's per thousand. And in fact, we sell the price always but per thousand, it would appear with these. And here we've got multiple decimals, uh, no, decimal percentages. Yeah. Um, and different, you can see, you can relate a D to the C price if you want. Um, so any price can be related to any other pretty much, can't it? And yeah, obviously right. the quantity breaks. I don't think anybody would have, hopefully not many people have too many products as, com as complex as that. Maybe they do, I don't know. Uh, no, not, maybe not. I, I, I think quite a lot of people do use trade A to E. Yes, yeah. Um, but probably wouldn't need that many decimals. Mm. And as we've said before, maybe these days it's easier just to have net prices yeah. give you the exact price you want. Um, pricing is a very, very personal thing, I've discovered, which is why this is all so flexible and complex. Mm. <laughs> um, but one thing that I haven't mentioned, I don't think, is that um, if you've got your system set to show discounts, then if you put a price like this, R minus 11, then on the invoice, it will say, um, where we are, are we? 888.30 minus 11%. But if you have the system set to only show net prices, then it won't. It will just show the 795. Right. That net pricing is, is changeable. So if you want generally to show net prices, but you've got a couple of customers who are happy to see discounts and would like to see the discounts in fact, then on the customer terms screen, you can set them to have 
not net prices. And obviously vice versa, if generally you want discounts, but some customers you don't want to show them discounts. Yeah. I think with the discount thing, it's possibly a bit difficult because they're funny amounts often, aren't they? And, uh, mm. Anyway, again, a very personal thing, but you can have it as you wish. And you can have it different for different types of products. Um, so here's this one um, where we've got a pack size here of 390, nothing to do with any of this lot. But the thing that we're showing here is quantity breaks, where here, as soon as you buy more than one pack worth, then you go on to a lower price and subsequent prices. Um, I'm not quite sure the meaning of the trading here, apart from it probably being a price that some customers get. And alternatively, there is an option in I think the default margin checking is just based on um, margin level that is set either across the system or per range of product. Just basic, you know, a low margin yeah. is anything below 10% or whatever. Mm. But you can have a different method of margin checking, which is based on for each individual salesman. Um, you can say this salesman. Uh, can only sell down to tradee level. So any price he does up to that level is fine. As soon as he goes beyond that price, he won't be allowed to do it, or you can say D or C. Um, basically, it's set on. on and so you, and of course, selling. you can set it against groups of salespeople, can't you? So you could say yeah. some group can only go down to C, yeah. others can do D and yeah. whatever. Yeah. So that's another way of doing it. Yeah, so there we go. Um, so the next thing we're going to go and look at is products which you sell, uh, tin products, where you sell them by the meter, but you purchase them by volume. And if I search product here, and this one is nicely set up, <clears throat> um, and you can see here that my my uh, buying price or my cost level is per meter cube volume but my actual product is one meter of timber and so my unit price is here 46 per meter um, and the way you make it work with this is that in this detail screen here um, you have tally allowed now this price uh, system isn't dependent on your using stopped by length products, so you can have just um, full meterage or you can have stopped by length, but the product would still be set on the pricing side like this. So tally allowed, and then the important bit is that you've got it set to volume here for the pricing method. This is always metric. Here I'm just putting millimeters, width, and depth. And when you put those two in, you see that's 25 and 38, the factor will automatically calculate. And that means then that if you do a sale and you do um, put a, you can put a T into the quantity, it then pops up the screen for putting in the length, the width and the depth. And it's working. Um, another interesting point here is that we got our description of meters here in front because that means that if I've got an invoice and it's got um, a quantity of 4.8, it can say 4.8 meters. But if you don't want to have meters in the description um, and you'd like it to say per meter, one way of achieving that is if you leave your pack size as one and you put your description of meter here and then the important thing is that if you change this or whatever price you've got, you know, even if you've got a net price, you just put a P against it, um, then all of a sudden it's saying one against here and that means it's going to give you the description that you've got against one. So it's going to say on a ticket it's 41 feet per meter rather than 41 feet each. Um, so that can be useful in some cases. Um, 
Now I am going to search for a hardwood product where we're going to be setting it up as just um, bought and sold by volume, basically. So here I've got my price and I'm saying the, it's saying it's meter cube, but I've also got my selling for that. And here in the detail, you just need to make sure that it says volume allowed. And then it will let you put a, um, a V in and it will let you enter the length, the width, um, yeah, the number of pieces, sorry, the width and the length and the depth. And it will calculate your meter cubage and therefore give a price per meter cubed for you. Um, and that can work quite well. Finally, in this sort of area, you can have sheets. So you might have all sorts of different sheet materials. Um, I've got some polystyrene sheets, which are 50 mil thick. Um, and you can see with this product, my supplier gives me, I've got an A there, which means that it's a £2.20 per square metre. And on this product, I'm also selling it per square metre um, as a price, but I could do the usual U here as each. Um, if I wish each sheet in this case. And the way that I set this up to work correctly is again in this detail screen and this time I can have quantity type, no restriction, pricing method, area. Um, and that means that I'm putting in the dimensions of my sheet as millimeters in here. Again, the fact that automatically calculates because with a sheet product, if you your customer comes in and says, oh, how many sheets do I need to cover 12 square meters? The salesman can put 12 M2 into the quantity and the system will automatically work out how many sheets. Now it's very important if it works out not, uh, not sort of 0.38 of a sheet for you to tick reject decimal places so that if it thinks you need 3.38, um, it will actually say you need 4. Um, and if you, if it does start being in decimal places, then it's because you haven't got this flag tick. Um, so, meter squared. And so that's also, I mean, that I've chosen there to demonstrate on quite a big sheet, but you can also use that for things like um, Always talking about quarry <laughs> tiles, tiles always do, yeah. Because again, the same thing. You can put, you know, five meters squared at, 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 as a quantity in point cell, and it work out how many tiles you need, yeah, which is, but, you know, which people normally will know the area. I'm sure they will. I presume, but you know, um, <laughs> so I think that. Oh, I haven't talked about. Promotion prices. Yeah. Um, you can see that on this current screen here, it's saying an end date. Um, and if it was a promotional price, it would have an end date and it would have promotion tick. But to set up a promotional price, um, you would go into the future pricing, which again, I haven't meant future prices. You can set up prices in advance to take. Uh, effect on a particular date. So you can set up a permanent price chain. I've come into this future just to set up a, um, uh, um, a, few, a promotional future price in this case. So I'm going to say that for the month of November, which is 30 days in it, and as soon as I put an end date in, I'm just pressing tab here and the promotional flag is automatically ticked. I can, it's based it on the collective prices. So I can just say, right, actually my price is, um, it's just going to be the trade A that I've changed. So they're going to get a whopping 17%. Yeah. 
today and I uh, um, Um, and when I say that, on the 1st of November, the price will kick in on the overnight on the 30th of November, the system shuffles the price back. So it goes back to the price before. Be aware, you can't set up a new product and instantly put in a promotional price because it really does panic at the end of the month because it's got nothing to go back to and you could end up with things without any price on them at all, which is rather as these are normally probably fairly things that sell quite well, be a bit embarrassing. Um, and we'll, we'll cover um, pricing maintenance and group amend a bit more in detail next time, won't we, as well? Yes, yeah. we will, yes. Because obviously, yeah, yeah, obviously you can you could put promotion. I think, I don't know that it lets you add a price, a future price, as a promotional price instantly, that you can load a future price in and as it's a future price, it doesn't take effect at that moment. So you can then use the group amend for your list yeah. of products and just put a common end date across them all really yeah. quickly and easily. Um, and in the next session is when we're going to be going across all these different yeah. things there. Um, did I mention PAC and PAC Delivered? No, I didn't. No. Um, PAC um, and PAC Delivered, I would... Uh, be most surprised if anybody was using these because again they give yet another level of price that you've got to remember you've got there and you've got to maintain but they were designed originally for um, the situation where you could have a big bag of screws or box of screws I think the word was um, and you'd have a much lower price if someone bought the whole box to if they bought them by the you know mm. if they were buying just 10 of them and so you'd put your pack price in here and your unit price would be generally in the collective. And again, you've got pack delivered. So I think probably um, rarely used. But if you're not sure you're interested, give us a ring, isn't it? Or, you can, uh, or have a look at the help and then give us a ring yeah, if you're not sure. Right. Um, I'll put some I mean, on the system, we always, in terms of inquiries, um, We've always had print price book, which is kind of you do need a bit of specialist knowledge and you need to know about your pages. It takes in pages. It's it's basically designed um, for the days when it was very very important to have a printed out price book sitting on your mm -hmm. on your um. But most people have counter. spreadsheets now, don't they? As well Absolutely. as a backup. Yes, yeah. as a backup, you yeah. have spreadsheets and things. But the print price book. Um, I don't know, maybe doesn't have quite as much use as it used to. <clears throat> the one that's really, if you want to see prices for groups of products, prices report is quite useful. You can do it with Porter Excel spreadsheet, this product, you can actually just use, you know, products with collective prices, um, future prices, promotional prices, regional prices, or, you know, margin percent less than a percentage, which could be useful. Um, you can choose to just do one region's prices. Uh, you can do date check is quite useful. Prices change, all prices change since the date. Prices not change since the date, and prices effective on a date, um, which could again be useful. And then you've got your just your normal choices. Yeah, that prices um, change not change since the date is a good one, isn't it? You, you could you could run that and say put all your prices up by five percent yeah. and blame Brexit. So. <laughs> Not that I did encourage you to do that, obviously, but you could. <laughs> um, so I think for today. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's it. That's brilliant, Fisty. Thank you. We're just a couple of little quick um, housekeeping as well. Uh, so that was uh, pricing. So that was price book one. So the next one is 21st of November, 2018, three o'clock again. So that's where we're going to cover the rest off on price book. Um, and then the last one this year will be stock control. So ready for your your end of year stock checks for those of you that do those. We'll, we'll try and um, persuade Louis to come in for that one as well because he's the stock check expert. And um, although we talked about we're going to obviously be doing customer terms, we do welcome any suggestions you have for future webinars. We're, we're all open to suggestions. We're going to try and keep going, keep trying to do one a month. 
yeah. and now we've got into the swing of it and um, <laughs> you know again uh, any thoughts um, and just another quick thing uh, you might hopefully you saw in the newsletter that we've got dates for our user meetings for 2019 um, 12th of February in Manchester, uh, 13th of February in Market Harbour, and then on the 14th Valentine's Day in Chepstow. So um, hopefully you can get, put set those free in, set, set one of those free in your diary. We'll um, we'll send out invites and agendas near the time, so we'll give you all the details for those. So I think that's it for this afternoon. Thank you uh, for listening. Um, hope to hope you. Able to tune in next time. As usual, we'll put this out. We'll put recording up on the um, YouTube channel probably by the end of the week. So, and we'll send the links out as well, so you can watch it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very you much. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you for watching this short tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us on the information displayed on the screen for further assistance.